y'all. It's Joyce. It's Friends Drift In, Episode 10, and today we're talking about everyday carry. This is my get home bag. Stay tuned. We'll see what's in it. For old-fashioned recipes and your garden and needs a while, sipping on Kentucky bourbon. Sit right back in your big red hat. We're taking rural back from the urban. Listen to the stories with Kentucky Proud Share the giggles with all of your friends You all tuned in To Friends Drifting So, get home bag. What does that mean? It means that if I'm down on the farm and I can have an accident that I can walk home and I've got I've got the commodities to do that. In my first section, I've got my snacks because to me that's the most important thing. Product endorsement? Not really, but I sure do love my nutter butters. Um, got some nutter butters, got some nuts, got these little, I talked about these, uh, little peanut butter snacks that we get at the Dollar Tree. I've talked about that on other videos. But just a little bit of snacks because when I'm down on the farm, sometimes I get hungry. I'm gonna put it in the second one. Paracord. You can never ever have enough paracord and the things you can do with this, oh honey, let me tell you. But always have a little paracord. A lighter, gotta have my lighter. You can burn paracord if you need to, but I always have a lighter. We've talked about in the winter, it's good to, you can flick your bic and, and heat up your keys so that your locks don't freeze, but you never know when you're gonna need a lighter. Now I did this myself just on a little bit of plastic, but just a little bit of duct tape. Now down here in the mountains, they would tell you, you, you can fix anything with shooting wire and, and electrical tape, but where I'm from, we use duct tape. So I just got a little, you never know when you're going to need a little bit of duct tape. This is my most accessible and probably the things that I would use most. Got a little flashlight just in case. Hello! Some Kleenex. Just some poly polyethylene cord. An extra phone charger, very important, extra phone charger. An extra bandana, I can use it as a mask if I forget or if it gets real dusty down on the farm and golly, could there be something hidden down inside here? Always have a little folding money on hand. You never know when electric is gonna go out and you're gonna need something at the store and they won't be able to ring it up electronically. Hey, you know, it's springtime in Appalachia, and it's a time when we're getting ready to be down on the farm a whole lot more, and it's a good time to review what you have in your get-home bag. If you're a new homesteader, having a get-home bag is really, really important to have it with you all the time. You know, we might say your everyday carry, which the prepper community calls EDC, if you want to be with the cool kids. What about EDC, Charlie? Well, you know, everybody, you know, if you live in the country and you and we, we I work so I'm out I'm out of the office or out of the home a lot and where we live out you got to have some way to get home you know because you never know what's going to happen you may have to walk home you may have to get a ride with somebody else your vehicle may break down anything like that so a lot of people got to carry different things first thing you do every morning when you get up you put your car keys your cell phone your pocket knife all those things in your pocket and you know and if you want to carry like a multi-tool on your on the side of your belt, depending on what kind of work you do, whether you whether that's something you can carry with you or not, you know, we have all those things in our bag, obviously. I carry a pocket knife every day. I carry on my key ring, I've got a couple little things too, like a little multi-tool, uh, just little bitty things that you just don't think about that you do every day. You know, and that's kind of a ritual. I get up every morning, I get up and say, cell phone, pocket knife, keys, and all that before I walk out the door. So everyday carry for a homesteader a little bit different for us where we live in the barn right we're about five miles from where our farmland is 
So I could, I could easily walk home if I had to, but I want to be, I don't want to be walking home and be uncomfortable. And I also don't want to be down on the farm by myself and get hurt and not be able to take care of myself until somebody can get to me because that happened last summer. It did. You know, I got, I got way too hot. Thank goodness Jacob was out there picking beans with me. But I mean, I just keeled over from heat exhaustion. You know, you want to be prepared when you are out in your fields. So we're gonna, I'm gonna just kind of pull out random things and see what I've got in my, my bag and we're gonna talk about that. So, a hat. No matter what the weather, buddy, you better have a hat. That'll keep, one, it'll keep the, the heat off of you. If it's raining, it, it keeps your beautiful hair bad hair day y'all it keeps your hair dry um if it's cold it keeps you warm if you're going into shock that's a good thing that you know just put that hat on so you don't get that that shocky coldness um, you know, yeah i had very important you know for talking. different reasons and you know a lot of other things that you need to do especially if you're working out on the farm stuff like my bag's got a couple pockets on the outside one side i've got a gatorade the other side i've got a water and we also carry a lot of water with us in in our vehicle when we go down to the farm but those are something you can carry with you all the time in your bag is water and probably a gatorade in case you get dehydrated and need to get more electrolytes these little headlights are a jewel they're not much of a fashion statement but I can't even get mine on. See, it's a good thing to check these. There we go. And there's my little red light. I don't know whether you can see that, but these are great. You know, you can look in, if you drop something in your car, you can look at it. If you're in, ending up having to walk home at night, you've got a light that your hands are free. Something I always carry for the homestead. I love gloves and I've got a really good broke-in pair. These are not good and broke-in, but gloves are easy to lose. And I always have an extra pair. These are the extra pair. These are work gloves. These are not little cloth gloves. These are these are leather. Always have an extra pair of gloves. If you you know, especially you're working or you know, you get you you drop a glove and you're still wanting to work and you you've already ended up with blisters on your hand, which happens early in the season if you're a homesteader and your hands have gotten soft over the winter. You know, so you always have a set of gloves. What else do you have, Charlie? Well, you know, she carries the one light, I've got a mag light, long, heavy white that you can use for a light or you can use for protection because it's heavy enough to be able to fend off someone if you needed to. And I, I've got one of those little hanging lights that you can hang up in your in in a tent in under the hood of your car, underneath your car if you're going to do some work on it. And then I carry also one of the headlamps as well. Rain poncho. Just a simple, clear rain poncho. If i got to walk home... I'm gonna feel better if I'm not wet. I've got a change of clothes in there too. But even sometimes these rain ponchos come in handy when a storm comes up because they blow up at, at ours. The storms just kind of blow up all of a sudden, it seems yeah. like. Those and if are, you're trying those... to get your car loaded or get, get get your harvest in, these are a great quickie. And, and inexpensive, you, you know, you can wear them. They're probably a buck, two bucks a piece. You can take them and keep two or three of them, and if you tear one, or if you need to use one to cover something up, you can use it as a tarp if, if in, in an emergency. Extra shoelaces. Y'all, this is the bane of my existence. For, for whatever reason, I'm always breaking shoelaces. So I always have an extra pair of shoelaces in my get-home bag. And that, that's good for my shoes. But, you know, sometimes you need string for something else. So, I mean, there's a lot of things you could do with shoelaces. It, you know, it's, it's another extra string. And, uh, again, a lot of strings you keep, you know, she showed the paracord before. And we talked about the, brought out talking about the lighter, using the lighter on the paracord. Anytime you cut paracord, take that lighter and just kind of sear the end of it, and that'll keep it from unraveling, and that makes it last longer. So that's another little tip for you. Socks. Extra socks. Y'all, there is nothing more miserable and walking around in wet socks. Now, these are just little cotton ones. I've got some wool ones that I carry too. I'm not gonna drag them out. But extra socks wherever you go. In the winter time, I keep them all the time, but I always carry a pair of hose. If I get stuck out and it's cold, you can always put hose on. Man, you can do that too. Yep. It will keep you, keep you a little bit warmer if you're stuck out in the cold. Of course, we're getting ready for the change of the seasons oh, here. Yeah. You know, it's dogwood, dogwood winter, what they call it here in Appalachia. So it's it's almost spring, but but not quite. I'm gonna open this one up for us. You got one brand new one this time. 
last straw. We'll put some pictures, drop some pictures, some of these in a little bit later as well. But just in case, again, the even not just because of any kind of emergency like floodwaters. You know, get out in floodwaters. You don't know where that water's been or anything like that. You can use something like this to try and, and get clean drinking water. Down on the farm, the USDA says you gotta be very sanitary when you're handling, you know, produce. Even if you're just handling your hose and wiping them down sometime. So these come in handy for you know what, and they just come in handy for everything else too. Yeah, and you know, be on the lookout. We bought a bunch the other day for 49 cents a piece. We got the big old tubs of them. I bought $10 worth of tubs, so we're set for the summer now. Emergency blankets. I don't usually use them in the summer, but I do worry about it in the winter. These are the reflective. These are little cheap ones. Now, all you preppers out there, you're going to say, Joyce, you can do better. Well, I could do better if I was doing a 72-hour bag where I thought I was going to bug out. Right. But this is just my everyday get home from the farm, get home from our office slash store slash second location. <laughs> This gets me home. So I've got two of these because a lot of times I've got the dog or I've got mom and, and you know, I want to make sure that I've got an extra emergency blanket to wrap up if it's cold. When we talk about homesteading, a lot of homesteaders carry, you know, do beekeeping. Yes. Now, Charlie has his beekeeping suit in the car. You know, we always have that as an everyday carry. I am not deathly allergic but have been known to have allergic reactions to bee stings. And certainly if you are on the homestead, you're gonna encounter some bees in your crops. So I always have an EpiPen. Um, you need to think about this. This is something that I, I've been carrying the same EpiPen for 10 years and when I was cleaning out and getting situated the last time I cleaned at Christmas, I thought, man, this EpiPen is 10 years old. I better get a renewal on that. So if you're used to carrying an EpiPen, Check and make sure that you're not outdated. And if you've got bees and you think that you might have a reaction or, or you know, you know, especially these new homesteaders, you don't think about it, an EpiPen could save your life. And it, it's worth it. It's worth the money to have an EpiPen in your everyday bag, especially if you're allergic. But if you've got bees, really important. If and you, Benadryl, yeah. you know, go ahead. If you've got bees, you ought to have, if you can get one, get an EpiPen and some Benadryl to keep on the hand in case a visitor comes by and gets stung that you don't know about. Yeah, yep. Yeah. It, it's being prepared for, because people are curious. If you're, in a, if you're in a place where there's not a lot of farming going on, people are curious and they're going to stop by. And then, you know, if you're in a place where it's a friendly neighborhood, people are going to stop by too. I mean, you would be, we're out in the middle of nowhere and the amount of people that drop by the farm would stagger you. This is my emergency bag. And I'm just going to go through what I've got that you can see. I've got Allegra. I've got Benadryl. I've got alcohol wipes. I've got my little EpiPen. I've got moleskin padding, y'all, especially if you're new homesteaders, moleskin padding, man, that can save you. If you get blisters on your feet, you know, if you're not wearing the right shoes. When I go down to the, the farm, I usually have got my work boots on, which are steel toed boots. But sometimes if I'm gonna work the mint, which is kind of, it gets kind of weedy and tall, um, I'll slip on a pair of, I don't know what y'all would call them, wellies, you wanna call them. Paddington bear boots, but big old rain butt boots, boots, butt boots. You know, I'll put them on to waddle through the, the mint. And why I do that is one, I don't like my pants legs to get wet. But two, if there's any slitherings, y'all, they'd hit that, they hit those plastic boots before they'd hit me, and that's what I want. <laughs> I've got some, um, speaking of slithering, I'm pull these out. Ace bandage. If you get a, be, uh, a snake bite, God forbid, but if you get a snake bite, this is kind of new, this was not the way I was taught, but this is apparently the new thing. You wrap yourself with this real tight on the snake bite, and you take a Sharpie and put the time that you put that on. You do that before you call anybody, and then you call. 
Uh, you call and see if you can't get help because a snake bike is serious business. If you have the presence of mind to take a picture of that snake, that will help tremendously, especially, you know, you need to know where you live and what kind of poisonous snakes are around. It's easy to identify a, a copperhead, which we worry about a lot. Copperheads are sneaky. Sneaky, sneaky, sneaky. Copperhead's probably the most dangerous yeah. one, but the most pr prevalent. Prevalent we here. We do have rattlesnakes sneaky. as well, but a rattlesnake will Rattlesnake usually will rattle, and so you've got, you've got a, you maybe have a second to react. But copperheads, sometimes they don't even move. They're just ornery. The only thing about copperheads, they do give you a warning if you have a good sense of smell. If you smell cucumbers in an odd space, get away. Move Call. on. They, they emit a cucumber type smell. So we were talking about snakes on the homestead just a little bit and being prepared for snakes. One of the things you need to think about is, what about in the hot tunnel, Charlie? You gotta watch out underneath the plastic stuff in the high tunnel. They love to come in there in the wintertime especially. But you know, if we're lucky, we have we we keep cats for that very reason because our you know, we don't we very seldom see a snake with cats around and especially Siamese cats. Siamese cats love to they love to bite <laughs> snakes. So we've got two it's of them. Always good to have some cats on the homestead. You really don't want your cats in the high tunnel all the time, but we have a we have a I don't know, a herd of yes. cats outside. Uh, some of them are feral, but uh, we feed them enough to keep them, keep them healthy, but they do a lot of hunting and they do keep the snakes down. But uh, as a new homesteader, anytime you're picking up plastic, anytime you're picking up old tin, anytime you're picking up old boards, even if you're picking up the, the bowls of your, your dog food, you know, picking up rocks, you want to, be very respectful that a snake could be harboring under there. And something that if you have compost piles, honey, let me tell you, when compost, when compost does its thing, it gets hot. And when it gets hot, snakes think that's just the greatest thing ever. And they lay their eggs in there sometimes. So it can be your worst nightmare if you've got, especially if you've got it covered and it's really working and seeping and doing what it's doing. So you always have a healthy respect for snakes and compost piles and it, the plastic in your high tunnel, plastic anywhere because... You know, snakes, probably for me, that's my biggest worry down on the farm. If that getting tell. too hot. <laughs> But the main thing is be careful. Just if, if you're lifting something that's been laying down for a long time, always kind of lift it with the uh, opening away from you so that if they're in there, they can get out. You know, there's also the good snakes too. The black snakes keep uh, rodents and stuff down. So, you know, one of those things, that's one of the reasons we have the cats too, to keep rodents out of our high tunnel and all that too. We were talk We were back to talking, we were talking about emergency situation for if you had snakes. And I wanted to just kind of go over what other kind of crap I carry as everyday medical. I keep extra of my prescription in case I forget to take any of my prescription drugs. I can take them while I'm down on the farm if I forget. I've got eye wash, y'all. I wash everywhere. I've got eye wash in, in my little compartment by my my console. I've got eye wash. I've got eye wash. Kelly wants me to show you, but there's eye wash in there. You get bugs in your eyes. You get weeds in your eyes. You, you know, the sun sometimes just, just makes your eyes tired. I've got cough drops. I've got pep, peps, what, Pepto Bismol yeah. tablets. You don't want to be on the farm and have that kind of problem. You definitely have the Pepto Bismol tablets. I've got a little bit of extra um, sunblock. Sunblock, but I carry I carry big sunblock as well. And then I've got some triple antibiotics, and I've got um, somewhere in there I've got a whole big bunch of, of band aids. What do you yeah, want? Band aids and wraps. Oh. <laughs> Shaking the table. I guess I'm trying to keep from shaking the sorry, screen. Sorry, sorry, y'all. They say this is going to be the year of big shaking, so we'll see how that goes. Something that's right on the top is just an old towel. And y'all, I love my old towel. This, you cut yourself bad, you know, you can use it to, to stop the bleeding. If you get a heat stroke, you pour some water on it and put it on your face. And man, that came in handy last yep. summer. But just an old towel in there. I always carry a change of clothes, um, chapstick, extra chapstick in case I drop my chapstick. Um, but if I were picking my most critical items that I would want in my everyday carry, I would always have, you know, you always want the, the pocket knife. 
you know. I always have a pair of scissors. I don't have scissors in my everyday carry. It, they're, well, I do, but they're really down in the bottom. Yeah. But I have four or five pairs of scissors that I can get a hold of in my car. Um, some of them I use for cut the herbs. Some of them I just use to cut, you know, if I've got bird netting on the, for the berries, I can use the, the scissors to cut the birds out if they get stuck in it. Just, just a pair of scissors everywhere. What would be, you know, and always light. Yeah. You know, I always want light. Even in, the, even in the daylight, sometimes it helps to have that light if you drop something down in a tiny little spot. Yeah, and true. Also, we carry, all carry multi-tools in all of ours. That way, if something, you know, got knife, uh, pliers, and all that in one one place, you can carry with you, and you can take it up, put it on your belt, and carry it with you, but I always keep one in the bag as well, because you never know when you're going to need something breaks down, you need a little tool kit. Now, we carry, Charlie carries more tools. I don't carry a lot of tools, because I really am not mechanically inclined, but, you know, Charlie carries more tools. Um, something he carries is a, a, a church key, what we call a church key down here. I don't know what y'all call it. It's, it's like a little four-way lug thing that you can use to turn on the water spigots or different kind of uh, square implements. There are four different sizes on it. That way, if you get out and you need to turn water on, turn water off or something, you've got that available to you. I carry a little small, It's I, you get a little miniature set of... Uh, uh, ratchet set that's about this big, something that'll fit in there. Of course, on my truck, I keep a toolbox when, when I'm running my truck for on the farm, especially. Uh, we also keep in there, keep a in all of our vehicles and all of our go bags, we carry little hammers that are that great Blake break, break glass. glass. I and, keep mine on my console, I don't even put it in my bag, but I do have that where I can. I can whack the glass out, you know, if I have to. And I carry a little crowbar, it's only a little small one, and we'll show you a picture of that later, that you can use to pull, that can pry stuff up, save you some... Crates. Even, you, know, you have a flat tire, you need to pull a hubcap off, it works for that. I mean, you know, but you can open a crate, uh, and it's heavy enough that you could drive, you can pop something, say you had a pin pop out and you need to nail it back in there, you could do that. As much room as a hammer would in there, so you can use it for a lot of different things. Um, just a little bitty things like that. And you know, you've got to tailor it to your own, especially for your get home bag, but you've got to tailor it to yourself because that's mostly, you know, I don't know that we're bug out people where we live at. We're probably going to stay home and do everything there. But, you know, you also got to keep little things. Like I said, I've got three flashlights. I've got a couple pocket knives. I've got a uh, the multi-tool in there, all kinds of things that you can just do a lot of different stuff with. You do. Now... You'll laugh. I usually take, if I'm going down to the farm and, and Jake is not gonna be with me, I take the dog. Mm -hmm. But we live, you know, in bear country. Now, I have never had to confront a bear, but I'm, I'm conscious of bear. Now, if you know, there, there's been a lot of controversy about carrying bear spray, I don't. But I do have some aerosol sprays in the car if I need them in the truck and I keep the dog with me to kind of warn me. If you have bears in your area, one of, there's two things that they really like to go after. One is your bees. That's why we don't have bees right now is because the bears took them over and we didn't have a fence and, and get to them. So they love your bees and it's not the honey, y'all. It's the bees, it's the, I promise. It's the larva. Yeah, they the love larva. bees. And the other thing that they tend to get into, uh, for us, they tend, tended to get into, they didn't bother our chickens, but they, let, but they bothered our feed. Get in the barrels of chicken feed. Actually, we were, first time they came down, they didn't bother the bees. They brushed against the bees and didn't bother, but they they turned over two bags of, uh, two barrels full of uh, chicken food and ate that. Crazy, crazy. So you need to be on the lookout for varmints. Now we do have coyotes too, and certainly that's a that's a an issue, and you know a, a, a girl's got to have her secrets, but certainly you got to be something. prepared. Got to carry something in your bag. You got to be prepared, y'all. Um, homesteading is a, a journey, and you know you're gonna find you know certain things that you need that maybe somebody else doesn't need. But you, you've got to sit down and you've got to think, all right, for my get home bag, what is it that I need? What is it that I need in my everyday carry? I mean, maybe you need, um, you wear glasses. Uh, do you have a second pair of glasses? Can you drive without glasses if you break them down on the farm and you know, you've driven to that location? You know, Charlie's got a second pair of glasses. Um, I can't stand hardly to be out in the, in the working without sunglasses. 
Now, I don't just have one pair of sunglasses. I got two because I don't. if I'm in the middle of picking and I break a pair of sunglasses, I'm not going to go five miles home and five miles back and get another pair of sunglasses. I want those sunglasses in my car. Um, my bag, you know, the get-home bag is heavier than what the preppers would like for me it to be. Uh, you know, 10 to 12 pounds probably is what it should be. Mine weighs more than that. Um, it's probably closer to 15. Uh, but I carry, I always have in the bottom of my my bag, I have a Gatorade and a water, no matter what. Because if, for me, this particular bag, the, you know, the, the Molly on the side, you know, yeah, I've got my, I've got a metal water that I carry as well. But I want to be sure, because that I've had problems with getting dehydrated, I want to be sure that I've got those and I'm not fumbling around to get them if i got to get out in a hurry. Um, my personal opinion is for a get-home bag in my situation where I'm going to walk, if I had to walk home, it's five miles. I am not going to get all tactical. You know, I'm not going to buy a, a $300 backpack to walk five miles to the house. Or, you know, if I have to walk, we're here in the in our store slash office. Um, you know, that's maybe seven to eight miles to get home from here. I'm not going to buy a $300 bag for that, y'all. I go down to the thrift store and I pick up thrift, thrift uh, backpacks. Now, I don't get the ones that are the kiddies. I look for the ones that are, are bigger. But, um... Uh, you know, I just don't think that you need to go broke to have a get-home bag. Now, if you're a heavy-duty prepper and that's your thing or, you know, you're used to backpacking and you think you're going to have to bug out, by all means. By all means. But a get-home bag is not just for preppers, y'all. It's for just every day living on the homestead, taking care of yourself, making sure you've got your medications, your first aid kits, you know, just the basics, extra little extra money, sunscreen. What else do we have, Charlie? Well, you know, everybody got different things. You know, we carry we carry a lot more snacks than most people because Joyce is a, has low blood sugar problems, so if she gets down, she has to have something to pop her back up. And that's one of the things you got to think I about. Get, I get hangry. <laughs> but, you, but you've got to think about the, your particular situation, your your conditions. Like you know, I'm obviously I'm a little bit overweight, so we carry some. You know, we try to carry some stuff to help. You know, just in case something like that. You know, carry aspirin in case you have a heart attack. Anything like that. I mean, I don't not I don't have any of those problems, but you know, you never know. We're getting of the age that this is gonna be some things we gotta start worrying about. Yeah. Um I don't know what else you know, there's a lot of things that you could talk about with farm safety. But I think the big things, you know, with the get home bag is just to planting the seed, especially if you're a new homesteader, planting the seed that you need to have everyday carry. Don't go down on the farm and not have an emergency kit handy. Don't go down on the farm and have extra water. Don't go down on the farm and not have the tools you need, you know. Don't go down on the farm without a charged cell phone. Because you don't know what you're going to get into. You can cut yourself quick as anything. And like, you know, you just a little, little, little cuts. I mean, if you got bandages, um, your everyday carry... I don't do what everybody else does with everyday carry. You know, in the wintertime, I don't fool with it. It stays in the car. Now, in the summertime, I bring it in every night because I've got, you know, my, my nutter butters and some of my peanuts and stuff that could go rancid if they get in the heat. Um, but in the winter, I don't fool with it. It's always there, but it's always by the door if I bring it in. I mean, I could pick it up and go. I don't hope, I hope we never have to bug out. Absolutely. And, you know, certainly if, if that is your mentality that you think that you're going to bug out, by all means, go for it. But before you worry about bugging out, worry about your everyday and worry about the people around you. Don't just think about yourself and what you need, but think about what if you had a guest down there and, you know, they were allergic or if, you know, you know, they got cut. Do you have the things that you need to take care of you? I mean, I've cut myself. I'm not bad, not bad enough to have stitches, but I've had a couple of times I've been bleeding pretty heavily, and, and you got to have something to uh, stop that bleeding. You know, it'll get you some of the little uh, uh, the stop clot. St stop clot. That's that's always something good to have. You can also get the uh, the really small bandages that will pull 
like a butterfly, butter, butter, butterfly, butterfly bandages. bandages. Yeah, get those kind of things because you never know what's going to happen. You know, me, I take, I've been known to take piece of paper towel and black tape, wrap it around wrap my around. finger, put it back in the glove, go back to work. Go back to work because homesteading is 24 seven, y'all. I mean, there's always something to be done. You get some downtime in the winter a little bit, but you know, depending on whether you've got animals or not, but but it's 24 seven and you can't be just stopping just because you've got a, a hangnail. Yeah. You gotta keep moving and you wanna do it in as much comfort and safety as you possibly can. We show you our store here. One day we'll show you what else is around. I'm looking at uh, four flats of tomatoes over there and six, uh, ten flats over in the window. We're starting new peppers and things. So, yes, we, we you know, people think that we're sitting here in front of our, our display behind us. But we're talking heads. We never do anything no. but talking heads. And we're in this, y'all. We're in this YouTube stuff for the money. Let me tell you, we're just making tons and tons of money by, by doing YouTube videos. <laughs> you know, and that's what everybody's going to say, you know, but we'll be getting some things going this summer here, but in the next couple of weeks, we'll be getting some footage in the high tunnel. It's basketball season. I'm actually a part-time TV and radio broadcaster. I, you know, I don't make any money doing it, but I enjoy it. I've always been involved in sports, so... Sports ends on Monday, so high tunnel work gets in full swing next week. And you know, we, we kind of wait for flood season to, to get over. We're not under the pressure that we used to be to have something ready for the farmer's market on this date. Uh, we can kind of do it in our own way. Um, and of course, besides doing the farm work, y'all, we make jams and jellies, gourmet jams and jellies. Um, a great Great gifts for Mother's Day, hint, hint, hint. See the link below to order online. Uh, we have strawberry moonshine is probably our favorite, and blackberry bourbon. Uh, there's all kinds of different varieties that we have, and we're gonna be rolling out some new ones if the state ever gets our recipes approved. Yeah. Uh, a lot's going on at Friends Drift Inn. As always, we thank you for stopping by. Please subscribe below. When we hit 2,500, we're going to start doing some live chats so that we can talk with you, not at you. Friends Drift In is growing a good life in Appalachia, and we hope you come along for the ride. I'm Joyce. Charles.